Essential components to a whole farm plan. Unit 7. Well, we're past the halfway point. You're, you're doing well. I'm, I'm glad um, to see how our progress is being made. You're on the path to being a small farmer or at this point you've probably made the decision to maybe not be a small farmer and, and that's all right. Um, that's the goal I have is to uh, encourage and make you self-evaluate your position and see where you're going. And so we're going to talk about um, the components and, and the things that I believe are necessary to to get started, to get some things on paper, to try to decide if this is really the direction you want to go. And we're going to talk about each of these uh, four items. First thing is goals and expectations. You know, why do you want to be a small farmer? What are your expectations? Is your goal to make two hundred thousand a year? Is your goal to make two thousand dollars a year? Is your goal to provide healthy food for your family? And and I think it's important that you start uh, writing some things down. And you know if you are going to sell at the farmers market for uh, twenty weeks in the summer, and you want to make. Uh, $10,000 on the farm then you're probably going to have to sell at least $1,000 a week at the farmers market to be able to sustain that kind of income and so as we start to build our business model we have to look at goals and I talk to my students a lot about goals uh, compatible with each other are your goals compatible and when I, you know, I want to go fishing every day and I want to make a lot of money at my job. Well, maybe those are comp compatible if you're a professional fisherman, but those probably aren't necessarily going to go together. So if you want to go f fishing every day, you're probably going to sacrifice some income due to having that as one of your goals. You physically write them down. So as we're working in the class, what are some goals? Write some things down. And they need to be achievable and measurable. We live in a small town in central Illinois, and uh, if I said I wanted to sell 20,000 pounds of tomatoes a year, that's a measurable goal. It's pretty easy to weigh some tomatoes and measure them, but can that be achievable? And then evaluate it on an annual basis. Your goal is to have a one-acre vegetable production garden. Well, at the end of the year, you're going to have to evaluate was did was that successful do you need a larger garden do you need a smaller garden and those are the kind of things you have to look at with goals and expectations but it's time folks it's time to get busy and start thinking about some of these items the four resources of business it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in these are the four things that um, that we have to talk about. Uh, your homework this week is evaluating each of these four items. The land that's available, the labor that's available, how much capital, and how much management. So those are the four things we really have to evaluate. And so when we look at those four um, resources, what resources do you have available? Do you have the capital requirement? How much time do you have to spend on the farm? If you have a job that keeps you very busy in the summer, then a small farm is going to be a little more difficult. Do you have capital items available? Do you have a truck? Do you have a tiller? And some of the capital things that you have to look at. And then how can you obtain those resources? Do you have a partner? Do you have somebody that's willing to to go in and help and and I tell um, students and people that I talk to that talk you know do I need a tractor to be a small farmer well we had one acre of our we had our one acre garden plowed and that cost us $140 well that's a pretty small um, investment 
to make to get our farm plowed and we can't hardly justify a tractor when we can have somebody custom uh, do some custom operations for us and so your priorities and and your risk how much risk are you willing to take and if you have a hundred tomato plants and you have crop failure that's probably not that's not a giant amount of risk that you're taking and, and not a giant amount of expense but how much expense are you willing to take and the business plan I just don't think in this class that we have enough time to really justify a business plan and and we're gonna be working on some things as as we continue in this class but I've I put a couple uh, nice resources on here uh, the University of Minnesota really nice uh, website with lots of small farm business plan and so you can go and you can look at what some things are doing and and we're gonna look at some case studies in the future and and try to uh, really start thinking about that business plan and what my goals are for the business and then we got the budget and you know this is where uh, the tire really meets the road and I start I start doing my budget and and I say I want to make X amount of dollars and and so we'll say for example I want to make uh, twenty thousand dollars and I think the expenses are going to be eight thousand dollars to generate enough produce to sell for twenty thousand so where's my markets going to be how much am I going to have to sell my tomatoes for how much am I going to have to sell my strawberries for and and so the whole farm budget is all the enterprises together and then I think a nice enterprise budget is one where you're just looking at maybe I'm just looking at heirloom tomatoes or maybe I'm just looking at a uh, hundred great plants or maybe I'm just looking at an acre of sweet corn and I can really start breaking down the enterprises that are most profitable one of my favorite uh, local food proponents would have to be Joel Salatin and I think it'd be worth your time to do some some internet research and do some reading on on what Joel has to say he's a he's a farmer from Virginia that's been working on the local food thing for a long time he's kind of the inventor of of pasture poultry and and the permaculture that's required and I just like this quote um, that he had um, about local food and I just think we have to understand that local food hasn't always came from the supermarket and I hope that once again in the future we'll be back to that local food where we know the farmer and we understand that food should taste good and it should be healthy. So do a little research. Joel Salton, very interesting, very interesting farmer. And then as we talk about um, summarizing the chapter, I just have some things here that you have to be um, aware of. I think you have to do some planning and sit down and and evaluating and, and looking at your resources you know who's your labor force if you're married is your wife willing to help if you have kids are they going to be willing to help and are you saying they're willing to help but are they saying they're willing to help we just have to make sure that everybody's on the same on the same page and then what determines a successful farm what is your opinion of that is it a dollar amount? Is it a lifestyle? Is it feeding your family? You know, what makes a successful farm? And that's something I want you to think about before our next unit.